Hi guys, so in this episode we're going to start bottling our cider. Now just in case you haven't seen the first video, I recommend that you go and watch that because that takes you through everything that we've done getting our cider going and fermenting. If you have watched that video, you'll have noticed that we did talk about how we've cleaned our bottles and glassware, but we haven't sterilised it. That's because the fermentation process takes over a week, so we thought there's no point cleaning them and sterilising them end up getting dirty again by the time that we actually need to bottle with them. This is actually two weeks after the end of our last video now. The instructions to only leave it for one week, well life got in the way of things. Got busy, had business meetings, so it's been two weeks that our cider has been sat there fermenting. Now I'm not worried about it because in my mind it just means that the yeast has had more time to burn all that sugar up and turn it into alcohol. So the next step is that we're supposed to take out half a jug of the cider and then we add in our cider flavouring and cider sweetening. Then we give it a good stir, make sure it's all thoroughly dissolved and then we add it back into the cider fermentation bucket. So we're going to be extra careful. We're going to use some of the sanitizer that we had left from when we sterilised the bucket uh, to give our jug a good cleaning and the spoon that we'll use to stir in the sweetener and the cider flavouring. So we'll just add one spoonful of the sanitizer, and then we'll add some warm water. Give it a stir. sides a bit, make sure the whole inside surface is clean. It's probably overkill doing this, but I figured we don't want to do anything to risk ruining the cider, especially after we're waiting this long. Right then, so first thing we need to do is test the cider. So we need to make sure that the cider is dry and that we can't taste any sweetness of the sugar. So we'll give that a go now. Mm. It smells like vinegar. Vinegar. Doesn't smell nice. It doesn't. Yeah. That's worrying. Oh, it smells better now. Is there the batteries flashing? Already. Oh well, hang on. I'm not sure what it's supposed to. It's not sweet. So it's not got the flavour in it. It's supposed to taste dry. Well, not, not sweet. Keep... Should I try a bit? Not really, but okay. Uh, that tastes like cider that's not sweet at all. Yeah, so... But at least it doesn't taste like vinegar because you worried me there. Yeah, I was worried for a second as well. So, I'm definitely sure that this is finished now. I can taste the alcohol. It doesn't taste at all sweet. So now, we need to add our flavouring and our sweetener. So we'll stir it in here, make sure it's thoroughly mixed in, and then we'll add it into the main tub of cider next. Okay, so I've put the mixed berry cider flavouring in and now we're going to add the sweetener. Okay, we'll give it a stir. Okay, so now we've added those two sachets we need to add this back into the main bucket. And now we're going to do it really gently because there'll be sediment at the bottom of the bucket. So I'll pour in slowly and I'll be stirring at the same time. Just nice and slowly because we want to stir that up at the bottom. And now we leave it for 24 hours to settle. Right now we're just sterilising our glassware, so we don't think we're going to need all of these four jars, um, we've been saving up lots of bottles, uh, so we think we've got enough with the bottles and more like one or two of these, but uh, we're just going to sterilise them all anyway just to make sure that they're ready if we need them, and one thing we're doing is just letting the water, the sterilising fluid drain through the valve. Uh, that way we know that the innards of the valve themselves are sterile as well. We don't have to worry about anything nasty there. 
So one thing we noticed is the Kilmer 5 litre jugs, even though the valves look identical, um, it does seem to have a better flow rate, whereas the, the Ranger's own 3.5 litre one, it just seems to trickle out a little bit. Um, so they look the same, but there is a difference. So they should be painfully slow for your pint glass to fill up using the the range is on one, so food for thought. So what we've done is we added the remainder of the sanitizer crystals into our sink and filled it with uh, cold water and we've gone through and cleaned all of our glassware, all the bottles, all of the Kilmer 5 litre and 3.5 and litre jugs that we have. So they're now sanitized, clean, sterile, ready for us to start bottling. Just a, a quick tip for you, um, I personally struggled with getting the flexible tube on the long non-flexible tube uh, so what I did is just heat the end of the, the flexible tube up just over the outlet of your kettle just to soften it with the steam and then that will just help make it that little bit easier to get it on so we ended up buying the make your own siphon kit which we've just put together now and we just need to make sure that we run the sterilizer fluid through this make sure this is really nice and clean and then we can get onto the really good bit of bottling so I'll do that now to get the sterilizing fluid through your siphon kit after you've put it together I've put the long end in the sink and now you basically just suck on the valve and draw the water through. Sanitizer fluid doesn't taste very nice but hopefully the cider will taste much better. So after you've managed to get a good taste of the sterilizer fluid all you need to do hold the long end up get the Valve down, just let it go. So now we need to actually start siphoning into the bottles. I just had a quick taste, and at first there was a really bad smell of an ammonia y something or other, but it does taste like mixed berry fruit cider, just warm and really flat. So I think everything's gone alright. So what we're going to do is we'll clip the siphon kit onto the side of the tub and start siphoning. Alright then, so for the siphon to work though, you need to be below in order to get the benefit of gravity. So I'm just ducked down here below the counter. And in we go. Now you're supposed to leave about 2 inches, 5 centimetres of headroom from the top of the cider to the top of the bottle. So I reckon I'm going to stop here about the neck of the... So there is a valve here to help you as well. So we've just finished decanting the cider into the bottles and during the instructions they tell you to be careful of sediment and we were fairly dubious, we didn't think there was any sediment but uh, actually there is quite a bit in there even with these kits so you do need to be really careful that you don't stir at the bottom because you don't want to get that sediment in your cider. Sorry about the background, but this is literally the only place in our kitchen that is not covered in cider, bottles, or sanitizer. <laughs> so basically all of our bottles are filled now, and so are some of the, the kilner jugs. So all we have to do now is add a heaped teaspoon of sugar, and we're using the same dextrose sugar that we used when we were actually making the cider itself. So we're just adding that to each bottom. All right, and so we bought ourselves 100 of these gold bottle caps. We bought them from the homebrewshop.co.uk and they're about three pounds 50 for this bag of 100. Now I had read online that you could just use a hammer to whack these on but when they arrived and I tried to test that theory out, it didn't work. So then we went back to the homebrew shop and bought this. It's a bottle clamper and it was approximately £10. And you just use that to seal the bottles. So obviously we're using gold caps here, but you can choose. There's a variety of colours, blue, green, red, black. So this is magnetic, so you just drop the cap on. Out of the way. 
And what you do is you clamp and you push all the way down so that it can't go any further. You feel the spring kind of nudge at the very end. And then you let go and you've got a cap bottle. Only got to do that another 27 times. Let's get cracking. Hey guys, so that is now all the bottles, all 26 of them. They've now had a heap teaspoon of sugar in and they've all been capped. Didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it would. So now we leave those in a warm place for a week and then we put them somewhere cool and dark for up to another two weeks for the clearing. So now it's a great big long game of waiting. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for the last and final video in our instalment on our experience with this cider when we will finally, finally get to taste our cider after about four or five weeks in the making. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon guys.